Hello there, my fellow Dawi friends, and welcome. Welcome to another video where we talk about these short but awesome people. Since I started last time with detailing more aspects of the races I've already introduced, for today I've decided to talk in more depth about the dwarves. Of course, it's impossible to present their entire culture in one video, without said video being at least a couple of hours long, so in this episode, I decided to present to you some things about their biology and stages of life. I am your host, for today, the Dawi narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a few things about them, shall we? The Dwarven people are short and stunted in nature, but possess a high degree of durability, endurance, strength, immovability, and stubbornness that many other races would often mockingly compare to a stone or a mountain. Most dwarves stand around 3 or 4 feet in height, however they are noticeably very stout in build, with strong thick arms, long broad shoulders, and short but powerful legs. Female dwarves have a similar physique, however they are much more curvaceous, and instead of cultivating beards, they braid their hairs in much the same way as a sign of status and age. These characteristics are advantageous in their underground home, making their stunted yet stocky bodies well suited to the cramped environments of the tunnels. As you might expect, dwarves are also natural diggers and miners, with many clans often lending their youths or beardlings as miners or military warriors as a trial of passage to adulthood. It is also customary, and in most cases mandatory even, for all male dwarves to have a beard of some kind. Most dwarf youths begin to grow their beards at a relatively young age, and will continue to do so for the rest of their lives. The beards are an integral part of dwarven society, for it often dictates a dwarf's personal age, wealth or experience. The longer the beard, the more respect he gains from his peers and those of society. The dwarves are also known far and wide as a race of alcoholic drinkers. Known famously for brewing some of the finest beers and ales in the old world, the dwarves would like nothing more than to sit down, have fun with their companions, singing songs and drinking beer until the rise of the morning sun. As such, the Dwarven people have naturally strong livers, allowing them to drink vast quantities of alcohol without much repercussion. Indeed, Dwarf Ale is actually nourishing to a Dwarf, a Dwarf being able to survive off of it alone for weeks on end, and not suffer malnourishment for it. Another characteristic of the Dwarves is their strong resistance to magic. Dwarves are not able to feel or control the winds of magic like other races within the Warhammer world. In fact, the Dwarven race has grown such immunity to magic that they have become highly immune to all forms of common mutation, a severe and common side effect that is often associated with those races that do dabble in the winds of magic. Some have speculated that the Old Ones created the Dwarves in an attempt to create a race that can resist the touch of chaos, and the uncontrollable magic it brings forth, but the results have made the Dwarves noticeably shorter than the other races. As such, the only way a Dwarf will be able to use magic in any form is in the use of runes and the proper teachings of a runesmith. Dwarves age much more slowly than humans do, although the difference is not as great as one would conclude based upon the differing lifespan. For example, humans become full-grown at around 16 years of age, while the dwarves do so around their 18th or 20th year. Nowsdeg, or the day of naming, is regarded as the first day of a dwarf's life. On this day, the newborn's parents, accompanied by their clan elders, and as many generations of direct ancestors as are still alive, would present the infant at the temples of Grugni and Valea, 
to receive the blessings of the ancestor gods. First, the male relatives take the baby to the temple of Grungne, where the birth is recorded in the Hold's Annals of History. The baby is then handed over to the female relatives, who go in joyful procession to the temple of Valeia. There, the baby is passed through the smoke of Valeia's hearth and given the first spoonful of stone soup, a ritual of welcome to the new clan member. Although they marry earlier, especially in noble families, the humans of the old world are generally considered adults when they reach the age of 16. Dwarves, on the other hand, are not considered adults until they are about 30 years of age. Their childhood is usually spent learning the clan's craft, traditions, and place in dwarf society. In addition, all young dwarves of all clans and both sexes are required to learn mining fundamentals and spend at least two years in the mines belonging to the hold. While working in the mines, some of these garazi, or young ones in the Kazalid language, may learn other skills, such as metalworking and smithing. One of the most important events in a dwarf's life is entry into adulthood. It is marked by the rite of Kumenut, where the young dwarf is formally presented to the clan. Those clans whose members live in scattered settlements would usually wait until they got together on a Zagazdeg, or the Day of Remembrance, to observe this rite of adulthood. A dwarf reaching adulthood makes an offering to the clan's ancestors and the ancestor gods. This is normally shown with an apprentice craft he created to demonstrate the youngster's skill in the clan's craft. So, for example, a young dwarf from a brewing clan offers a barrel of dark ale, while a dwarf from a jewelsmith clan offers a piece of jewelry or a cut gemstone. The clan elders present the newly adult dwarf with his first set of tools and the insignia of the clan's craft guild. At this stage, the dwarf is considered a gnutromi, or young clansman. As young clansmen, dwarves begin to establish their reputation within the clan. Most males take an apprentice to one of the senior clansmen and would immediately begin the second stage of their tutoring in the craft, skills, and lore of the guild. Dwarf females, or maidens, turn their thoughts to marriage at this time and with the advice of their clan elders, the Dwarf Maiden's main duty is to help form stronger ties with other potential clans. Under all but the most extreme circumstances, a Dwarf Maiden must always marry outside of the clan, but never outside of the proximity of the Dwarf Hold itself. The princesses of a royal clan are typically the only ones who can be married into the royal clans of allied holds, although they generally have a bit more freedom of choice in marriage than their human counterparts. It is deemed acceptable for a princess to marry beneath her social status, provided the prospective husband is of impeccable character and wealthy enough to keep her in suitable style. When a dwarf reaches his 70th year, they become known as altromi, or full beards. Once they reach this age, they are considered senior members of the clan, and they are allowed the benefit of an apprenticeship. The clan elders are usually the ones who resolve any disputes which may arise if two or more full beards want to take on the same apprentice, or if any young clansman is not chosen. Very few full beards have been known simply to choose to perfect their mastery of their clan's craft rather than taking an apprentice at this time. This is usually the time when most dwarves would begin to marry themselves to a possible spouse and sire children of their own. In their 120th year, those dwarves who have lived this long earn the privileged status of Langtromi, or Longbeard. Though not yet regarded as a clan elder, Longbeards are respected for their wisdom skill and knowledge of clan tradition and craft. Their reputation will have spread beyond the clan and may begin to receive commissions from outside clans as well. Some longbeards continue to accept apprentices, 
but this is the time at which a dwarf is generally expected to pursue mastery of their craft without the burden of an apprentice. The most spectacular examples of dwarf craftsmanship comes from the longbeards. Very few longbeards marry at this age anymore, since the vast majority have decided to dedicate their lives to their craft instead. When they reach 150 years old, a dwarf becomes a Frongring, or elder of the clan. All elders become part of the elder council by virtue of age, wisdom, or length of one's beard or hair in the case of women. The council considers any matter that directly impacts the clan and its interest. In some clans, the council is empowered to decide the actions for the clan. In others, particularly in warrior clans, the council may do more than just recommend a course of action. Once they reach this age, dwarves remain elders for the rest of their lives. By this point in life, a dwarf usually lives for around 200 years. Dwarves exceeding 200 years of age are given the extremely privileged title of Gormtromi, which translates to Great Beards. Though relatively few in number, the great beards are held in the highest esteem within both the clan and society. Their knowledge and experience are especially valuable to the clan and craft guilds during difficult times. Some remain on the clan's elder council, while others rededicate themselves to their craft. Lore masters and master runesmiths are almost always great beards. Those rare dwarves who exceed 400 years of age earn themselves the legendary status of Karugromfi, which translates as living ancestors. These are among the greatest of the dwarven people, for they are venerated as the blessed of the ancestor gods and the symbols of their clan's good fortune. While humans tend to become more frail with advancing age, the vigor of a living ancestor remains undiminished. As such, it is said by this point, the only thing that could threaten a living ancestor's life is injury or fatal disease. It is sometimes said that the living ancestors are simply too stubborn to die. Among dwarves, it is more respectful to say that they have more important things to do than simply die. Driven by the thirst for knowledge or the desire to accomplish a certain task, these dwarves never seem to age. The great runesmith, Krog the Grim, for example, is said to have reached his 1620th year in 2512 IC. According to ancient lore, the earth itself gave birth to the dwarven race. In death, their bodies are returned to her embrace while the spirit journeys to the halls of the ancestors for all time. The priests of Gazul are held responsible for the special rites to perform before the final journey can begin. Dwarves dying of old age sense their stamina and strength fading, and know that their time is fast approaching. A priest of Gazul is thus summoned, and the dying dwarf gives the priest the possessions that will be joining him in his tomb. Then the heirs of the dying dwarf would assemble, to witness the dying dwarf's bequest. This is like the reading of a will among humans, except that it takes place before death. Once this task is completed, the dwarf spends the remainder of his time with friends and family. When death finally arrives, the priest returns to take the body to the temple of Gazul, where it lies in state for four days. There, the priest invokes the protection of Gazul over the body to ensure his safe arrival to the halls of the ancestors. Similar to the rites used by the priests of Mor among the humans, the rites also serve a dual purpose in protecting the body from being used in necromantic purposes. At the end of the four days, the clan's burial vault is opened and the body is entombed. Once this is done, the priest of Gazul reaffixes the sealing rune to the vault to prevent any desecration until the next burial. Those dwarves who die in battle are given the same rites by an accompanying priest, but are not given the same amount of respect as those who die in the holds. Instead, they are buried honorably on the spot, 
with only the bodies of kings, runesmiths, or elders being returned home for burial. And this, my friends, has been my brief but hopefully interesting presentation of what the life of a dwarf looks like. Would you like to learn more about the dwarves, their religion, government, etc.? Or would you rather I talk about the elves next? And then maybe rotate between the empire and the dwarves? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video enjoyable or informative? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you kindly for watching and have a peaceful day. May the blessings of Grimnir, Grungni and Valea be upon you.